Hi biologists, I hope you're all keeping yourself safe. Now what we're going to look at today is the energy in food chains. We kind of touched on this last lesson when we looked at food chains and foods, food webs and we talked about the arrows showing the movement of energy along the food chain. So the energy remember starts or is provided by sunlight energy which the producer traps in photosynthesis and converts into chemical energy or glucose and that glucose is then turned into the biomass of the organism so we're talking there about leaves we're talking about in plants we're talking about proteins we're talking about muscles bones etc that's the biomass of the organism so the other thing we mentioned last time was the fact that each stage in our food chain is referred to as a trophic level so on this photo this food chain here the first trophic level would be the producer then we'd have the second trophic level which is the primary consumer etc and what we're going to talk about today is where that energy may be lost as we move along the food chain so when we talk about energy being lost what we mean is that that energy in the biomass is no longer available for the next organism in the food chain. So if you look at this um, food chain here, so we've got grass, rabbit, fox, um, the rabbit is obviously going to eat the grass, but the rabbit isn't going to make all that grass biomass available for the fox to eat. Some of it, it will convert into muscle and into fur and into bones and into fat, and so that will be available to the fox, but some of it, it's going to use for energy. So it's going to use it in respiration to provide warmth so that it can move, so that it can make noises. And some of it is going to be lost in the rabbit's feces or as urine, for instance. So that biomass, that, that chemical energy, that stored energy that was originally glucose in the grass, is taken in by the rabbit, some is converted into rabbit, muscle, bone, fur, etc. And so the fox could eat it, but some of it is lost. So we can show the energy that's being transferred in a Sankey diagram, exactly as you might have seen in physics. So here for the rabbit, um, we've put some numbers on it now. So we've got 25 kilojoules of energy taken in as plant biomass. Yeah. We've got 0, 0.0 kilojoules of energy is stored in new biomass. So that's going to be the rabbit itself. But we've lost 12.52 kilojoules into the environment as faeces and as urine and we've also lost 12.4 kilojoules which has been transferred into the environment by heating and keeping that rabbit nice and warm. So we can work out the efficiency now, the energy efficiency, again similar to as you would do in physics. So we can have um, on the top of our equation we've got the energy transferred to biomass so for instance, in our rabbit example, we had 0.08 kilojoules, which was stored as new biomass as the rabbit. And we can divide that by the total energy supplied to the organism. So that's the total energy taken in by the rabbit as grass, which is 25. So we have 0.08 divided by 25, which gives us a value of 0.0032. Um, we could turn that into a percentage by timesing it by 100. So a couple of questions for you to have a quick go at to make sure that you can do this. So we've got a table here with our trophic level. We've got producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. And then we've got the energy in kilojoules per metre squared per year. Um, which is stored in biomass in each of the four trophic levels. So, and this is for a wetland community. So what you've been asked to do is to calculate the energy transfer efficiency from producers to primary consumers, primary consumers to secondary consumers, secondary consumers to top consumers, and then to explain why you don't think there is a higher trophic level than the tertiary consumers in this situation. 
I suggest you pause the video and have a go at these questions now. OK, so let's have a look at the answers now. So question 2a, it says calculate the energy transfer efficiency to two decimal places from producers to primary consumers. So what we do is we take our energy stored in the biomass of the level for our primary consumer. So that's 6184 and we divide that by our total energy supplied, so from the producer. So we divide that therefore by 37,000 and that gives us a value of 0.16713 and we need to give our answer to two decimal places. So therefore our answer is going to be 0.17. For part B, this time we have our secondary consumer value at the top, so 280 and we divide that by the energy provided from the primary consumer which is 6184 and that gives us a value of 0.04527 so again to two decimal places that's 0.05 and then part c from secondary consumers to top consumers so now our top consumer value is 33 so we divide that by 280 which is provided by the secondary consumer and that gives a value of 0.11785 so again to two decimal places 0.12 so question three on that is to explain why there is no higher trophic level than tertiary consumers and actually this is all about energy and you look at that energy value and realistically now we're getting to the point where there's less and less of energy available and so really at this point we're saying that there's not enough biomass there's not enough energy stored in biomass for a population of the next level in the in the food chain so if we had um, a, an even higher level consumer, there is not now enough biomass available to support that group of organisms. OK, so we're now going to look at biomass in a slightly different way, um, because what we can do is we can show our biomass for each trophic level as a pyramid and it's referred to as a pyramid of biomass so this is an example um, so here we've got a producer at the bottom that has a mass of 809 grams per meter squared then we've got our primary consumer secondary consumer tertiary consumer so like when we do our food web we always start with the producer at the bottom and these are always pyramid shaped so we have a, a very large bottom and they get narrower as they move up and what we can do is, again, we can do some calculations on these exactly the same as we've just done. Um, but instead of looking at uh, it being given the information as a food chain, now we're being given information as a pyramid of biomass. So for this question, it says, what is the percentage of biomass that has been transferred from the producer to the primary consumer? And so the primary consumer had 78 grams per meter squared divided by, remember, the, the total energy that came in, which was 809 grams per metre squared, and to turn that into um, a percentage, we times it by 100, and that gives a value of 9.6%. A couple more examples. Um, calculate the percentage of biomass transfer from the primary to the secondary and the secondary to the tertiary. If you want to have a go, pause the video now. So if you've had a go, you should have worked out, therefore, that from the primary to the secondary, here we take the secondary value of 36 divided by the input of 78 times by 100, that gives 46.2%. And then secondary to tertiary, the tertiary value of 6 divided by the input of 36 times by 100 gives 16.7%.